Hello, this is Mr. Beard, and this is my video on calculations involving quantities of substances in moles and the numbers of particles that that uh, involves. So before we look at this, you need to make sure you're comfortable with chemical symbols and formulas, um, how to calculate relative formula mass, and also the basics of the mole concept as well. Now, in this video, we are going to be looking at the basics of this calculation. Then we'll look at a whole load of examples of how to calculate a quantity or convert a quantity in moles into a number of molecules. Then how to convert a quantity in moles into a number of atoms. And then finally, how to convert a number of molecules back into a quantity in moles. OK, so let's look at some of the theory that we're going to need to uh, help us answer these kind of problems. So how do we what's the relationship between quantities in moles and numbers of particles? Well, let's remind ourselves about moles first. Remember, the mole is the unit of measurement of chemical quantities. So we don't measure chemical quantities in grams or kilograms or decimeters cubed. We measure them in moles. OK, and one mole of something is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of that substance. And we call that number Avogadro's constant. Now, you should try and memorize 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. This is an absolutely enormous number. It looks like this. So 6 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It is that number there. It's an absolutely enormous number. 602 million trillion is roughly what that number is. Um, and so it's such a huge number. We use it in standard form. So you don't have to spend ages writing it down. And we call it Avogadro's constant. Now, in terms of this um, presentation, we've got this really important uh, calculation here, which is the, the quantity of a substance in moles is equal to the number of particles present divided by Avogadro's constant. And we can summarize it in a symbol version as this. So we can say N, that is our number of moles, is equal to capital N, that is our number of particles, um, divided by L, that is the symbol for Avogadro's constant. Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at example number one of calculating a number of particles from a number of moles. So how many molecules of water, H2O, are there in 3.00 moles? Now, in all of these questions, uh, when we're calculating the numbers of particles, the actual nature or the identity of the substance is kind of irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether that would say water or ammonia or methane or even something stupid like bicycles, that maths is still going to be the same. So let's write down our equation to start the maths. So we're going to say N number of moles um, equals n divided by l okay substitute in what we know already so what we know is that um, uh, three our number of moles equals capital n our number of particles divided by avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 and so if we multiply both sides by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, we can rearrange that to give us this, which rearranges to n equals 3.00 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And if we do that, we get an answer of 1.806 multiplied by 10 to the power of 24. And that is our final answer. So all we really need to do is multiply our quantity in moles by Avogadro's constant, that's 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Let's look at example two. So how many molecules of nitric acid are there in 0 0.400 moles? Again, the actual chemical we've got is irrelevant. It's, it's kind of a distractor. It's there to you know make you think you've got to do something with it, but actually it doesn't matter what that is. All that matters is that we've got 0 0.400 moles of it. So again, let's write down our equation. Now, we just saw in the previous one the way that the n equals n divided by L rearranges to give us the number of particles, capital N equals moles multiplied by L. So we've got 0 0.400 moles. L is Avogadro's constant and is always the same thing, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. 
So we just stick that into the calculator and we come up with 2.408 times 10 to the power of 23 as our final answer. Okay, so let's look at example three then of calculating a number of particles from a quantity in moles. So in this case, how many molecules of glucose are there in 1.500 moles? Now again, the fact that it's glucose is an irrelevant. It's just there as a distractor. So all that really matters is our number of moles. So we'll write out our equation. Number of moles, lowercase n, equals number of particles, capital N, divided by um, Avogadro's constant L. We've seen already how that rearranges. So we can say number of particles equals number of moles multiplied by Avogadro. So we get 1.500 moles multiplied by Avogadro's constant, which is always the same, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And if we do that right, we get 9.03 times 10 to the power of 23 as our final answer. Okay, so now we're going to raise the difficulty a little bit by looking at calculations where we're going to calculate numbers of atoms from a quantity in moles rather than just numbers of particles. So for example, how many atoms of hydrogen are there in 3.00 moles of water, H2O? Now in this case, because we're actually going to use that formula, H2O, it does matter what chemical we're actually talking about. Now, we're going to see there are two different ways to do this. Um, both of them are going to use this equation that we've met on the past couple of slides, where we're going to say number of particles equals quantity in moles multiplied by L. So let's look at our first method first. Now, in this one, we're going to calculate the quantity of water molecules, first of all, and then use that to find the quantity of hydrogen atoms. So what we're going to do uh, first is we're going to say the number of water molecules H2O like that equals N multiplied by L so that is 3.00 moles that 3.00 there multiplied by Avogadro which is always 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 and that is going to give me 1.806 times 10 to the power of 24 and here's where the formula comes in. If we know we've got this many water molecules, because each water molecule contains two hydrogens, we can just double that to get the number of actual hydrogen atoms in that water. So we can say the number of H's, N of H, is going to be the number of H2O molecules multiplied by two because each hydrogen, so each water contains two hydrogens. So we'll do 1.806 times 10 to the power of 24 multiplied by 2, which is going to give me 3.612 multiplied by 10 to the power of 24 as our final answer. So that is approach one. Approach two is to think about it is, is, is to think about it in terms of moles. So if we've got three moles of water, we can do something like this. We can say the number of moles of hydrogen is going to be the number of moles of water number of moles of water multiplied by 2 because again we're using that 2 in the H2O to tell us that the number of moles of actual hydrogen atoms in that much water will be double the number of moles of the water so we can we can go like this we can say the number of moles of hydrogen then is going to be 3 multiplied by 2 to give me 6.00 moles of hydrogen okay and then what we can do is we can find uh, how many actual atoms that is using our n equals moles multiplied by Avogadro so in this case our number of moles is going to be the six moles of hydrogen we just found out so we're going to do 6.00 multiplied by Avogadro 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 and again, it shouldn't be surprised that would give us the same answer, 3.612 multiplied by 10 to the power of 24. Now, it does not matter which of these approaches you use, just do whichever one comes most easily to you. Okay, so example two of calculating numbers of atoms from numbers of moles is how many atoms of oxygen are there in 
0.400 moles of nitric acid, HNO3. Again, we're going to look at our two approaches. So let's do the first one where we find the number of uh, uh, nitric acid molecules and then multiply that to find the number of atoms. So we're going to say the number of HNO3 molecules equals quantity in moles multiplied by Avogadro, which is 0 0.400 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And that would give me 2.408 multiplied by 10 to the power of 23. And then we can calculate our number of um, oxygen atoms, N of O, by recognising that each nitric acid has got three oxygens. So it would just be the number of nitric acids multiplied by 3, which is 2.408 times 10 to the power of 23, multiplied by 3, and that would give me 7.224 times 10 to the power of 23. Okay. Now, our alternative approach is to find the number of moles of oxygen atoms first, and we'll do it similar to the last slide. So we're going to say number of moles of oxygen is going to equal the number of moles of nitric acid multiplied by 3. And the reason we're multiplying by 3 is because of the three oxygens in each nitric acid molecule. So we go 0 0.400 multiplied by 3, which equals 1.200 moles of um, oxygen. And therefore, to find the number of atoms of oxygen, we just say N of O equals number of moles multiplied by Avogadro, N times L, which is 1.200 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And that again will come to the same answer of 7.224 times 10 to the power of 23. OK, last example on this type of problem, we're going to look at how many atoms of hydrogen are there in 1.500 moles of glucose, which is C6H12O6. So again, we're going to look at both of our different methods. So in our first one, we're going to calculate the number of glucose molecules first and then um, use that to find the number of hydrogens. So we're going to say number of glucose, N of C6H12O6 equals moles N multiplied by L, Avogadro, which is 1.500 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, which will come to um, 9.03 times 10 to the power of 23. Okay, And then we can find our number of hydrogens like this. We can say the number of hydrogens is going to equal our number of glucose molecules, C6H12O6, this time multiplied by 12, because there are 12 hydrogens in each glucose. So this will be 9.03 times 10 to the power of 23. That's our number of glucose molecules, multiplied by 12, because there's 12 hydrogens in each one. And that will give us a final answer of 1.0. 0836 times 10 to the power of 25, an absolutely enormous number. So let's try method two. So in method two, we're going to find the number of moles of hydrogen atoms first and then calculate the number of individual atoms. So we say the number of moles, N of H, number of hydrogen, num number of moles of hydrogen equals the number of moles of glucose, C2, so not C2. Uh, C6, H12, O6, multiplied by 12. And again, it's 12 because there are 12 hydrogens in each um, glucose, which means we do 1.5, that's the moles of glucose, multiplied by 12, and that is going to give us 18 moles of hydrogen atoms. So now we can use that 18 moles of hydrogen atoms to find the number of um, individual atoms we've got. So we can say N, capital N of H, so the number of hydrogens equals number of moles multiplied by Avogadro. Our number of moles we've just found out was 18. So we do 18 multiplied by Avogadro, which is always 6.02 times 10 to 
the power of 23 and that will give us a the same value it shouldn't be a surprise of 1.0836 times 10 to the power of 25. That's that. Really well done if you could follow those. Now our last three examples are going to be working the other way, working from a number of molecules back to a quantity in moles. So what quantity in moles is 3.01 times 10 to the 24 molecules of carbon dioxide? Now, now we're back to just looking at numbers of molecules. The actual identity of the molecule doesn't matter because we're not ex we're not looking at individual atoms. We're not exploring the formula at all. Um, so it doesn't actually matter whether it's carbon dioxide or water or methane or whatever it might be. So in this one, we're just going to write down our formula N um, of, uh, in this case, uh, CO2. So quantity in moles of CO2 equals the number of particles divided by Avogadro. So in this case, that is going to be 3.01 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by Avogadro, which is always 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And this will come to 5.00 moles exactly. Nice, easy answer. OK, so let's look at example two of these. What quantity in moles is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 21 molecules of sulfuric acid? H2SO4. Now, remember again, in these calculations, the actual uh, you know, name or formula of the compound is completely irrelevant. It's just the number of molecules is all we need to know. So we can say that the quantity in moles, N of H2SO4, equals the number of particles, capital N, over Avogadro's constant, L. So our number of particles in the question was 6.02 times 10 to the power of 20. One, we'll divide that by Avogadro's constant, which is always the same, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And if we do that, we get an answer of 0 0.01 moles. Nice and easy. Okay. And last example, what quantity in moles is 1.505 times 10 to the power of 22 molecules of ethene C2H4? Now, again, remember, we don't actually care what the compound is. Its formula is unimportant. All we need is this number of molecules. So we are going to say that the number of, so the quantity in moles N of C2H4 is equal to the number of particles, capital N divided by Avogadro's constant, L. Our number of particles up in the big circle there is 1.505 times 10 to the power of 22. And we're going to divide that by Avogadro's constant, which is always 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. And if we do that, we get an answer of 0 0.025 moles. Beautiful. Right. OK, so that's it. The end. Um, as always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far. I would highly recommend rewinding the presentation a bit and try and do some of the examples, but put it on pause so you can see if you can work through the examples without my help. And then you can check back through uh, to see whether you got the answer right. So as I said, well done if you got this far.